Hello, I'm Daniel. And I'm Manuel. And today we're going to show you our ADAS logging vehicle. ADAS logging is one of the most complex challenges out in the automotive market right now. Because you have a whole lot of different sensors mounted on your vehicle that produce a giant amount of data that needs to be stored synchronously into a storage device. Today we're going to show you how we're setting up our vehicle, going out on a test drive and then come back into our garage offloading the data that we have recorded into our IT and cloud infrastructure. Before we get going, let's have a look what is installed on the vehicle. Starting off here on the top, we have in blue our LiDAR. This spins in 360 degree and gives us that view through its LiDAR beam. Down below, we have one of the six cameras that we have mounted around the vehicle. Also, these provide us with a 600 degree camera view. Down below here, we have our radar sensor that gives us distance information in front of our vehicle. Further to the back, we have a GPS antenna mounted. This provides us with GPS location as well as also time synchronization capabilities, which will happen in the back of our car with our record system that Manuel is going to show us a little bit more in detail right now. Thank you, Daniel. So here in the back of the trunk is the heart of our system. This is the measurement rack. We have two components that are right now important for us. One of them is our peak size system. This is a DC chassis so we can use it in the car. We have the cameras, the radar and the LiDAR all attached to the system and all the other interfaces that are needed like GPS and others. Additionally, the system is connecting us to our data storage, to our RAID system. We're using the Seagate Live mobile system here. So maybe let me just get that up and running for us so we can use it. Okay, we have that running now. So with that system, we have um, over 200 terabyte of data available that we can store when we are doing our test drive now. Now, before we go on that test drive, we want to make sure that everything that we have installed is up and running. So Daniel, why don't you come over and tell us a little bit about the routine that we need to do to get it going. All right, let's have a quick look at the software. Starting off, first of all, we need to configure all of our software according to the sensors that we have mounted onto the vehicle because these might vary from one logging run to another one. So as you can see here on display, we're having our GMSL cameras hooked up, we have our LiDAR and so on and so forth. And all of this is going to be stored into the MDF4 format onto our Seagate device. Once that is done, we need to check if all of our sensors are actually up and running. This is what we can see here up on display. So again, you see the different sensors are collecting data. So it looks like we're all set and let's go out for a test ride. Let's do that. All right, let's pack up and get going. Now let's see if these guys are really working. And I can do that from over here, from my laptop of the SystemLink WebO interface. Here on this little map, I can see that the people are just leaving our company and driving around the Theresien visa. With SystemLink, I have the possibility to have complete control of the system, hardware and software-wise. Hardware-wise, I can have an overview if we have uh, enough CPU and RAM usage and what kind of jobs they are already doing, including what kind of hardware they have in the system and when they, for instance, have uh, a new calibration date. And in this alarm and tag overview, I, for instance, can say that some of our cards and sensors are due to calibration. So the guys should actually need to come back to the store and we need to redo the calibration so we get the best data. But it's not only on the hardware side, but we can also do that on the software side. Software-wise, we can check if we have the latest software installed and if we get a new set from our engineers, we can directly deploy that over the web interface to the system. But despite that built-in functionality, we can even create custom user interfaces for our customers or for managers like me, where you can see that the guys are actually really moving with the car, that they're taking care of the speed limits, what kind of sensors we have connected, and they, that they're really logging valuable data and what kind of data throughput they're currently just generating in that second. And now I have a deeper look into that to see what the guys are doing and if the data is valuable for us or not. All right. Now, as you can see, we're out on the road and we want to get our first logging session started. So before I get that going, I again want to check 
if all of my sensors are up and running. So I'm checking again my sensor interface here and see everything is working fine. Next step is I switch over to the operator panel, which allows me then to start a logging session. As you can see here, we have different status information around our system and the sensors, which is good to make sure that everything is properly working. As a next step, I need to decide whether I want to do a continuous logging run or whether I want to do a triggered logging run. With these sliders, I can basically define how many seconds before or after a specific event need to be recorded because what's happening before and what's happening after that is typically what's also of interest. Right now, I just want to do a continuous recording. So therefore, I'm putting my sliders back to zero and start the recording. And as you can see, the system tells me it's up and running. Now we're creating a lot of data because we're recording everything. So therefore, we're switching over to a tool that our partner Conrad Technology provides, which is the so-called pre-labeling tool. This pre-labeling tool is intended for continuous logging runs where you can then add extra information on what is happening right now on the street. For example, we're passing a couple of cyclists right now, so therefore I'm adding this bicycle information. You see this coming up down here on display with the according timestamp. And with those timestamps, I can later on correlate that data, that metadata, with my sensor data to then make sure we can easily find that information as we are uploading that into our cloud and IT infrastructure. So this then allows us to reduce the overall cost of data and also the overall time to data. So moving on, I will continue with my labeling information. So for example, right now I see a car approaching us. I see another bicycle popping up and I see some pedestrians crossing my street. So with this, I can add further information. And again, that helps me find that later on easier and quicker. And that's what's going to come next because we now need to upload all the data that we're recording into our cloud and IT infrastructure. Okay, we're back in the office. We finished our test drive. Now it's time to get our data from our car into the cloud and IT infrastructure. And it's as easy as that. The data is out. And we plug it into our infrastructure. And we can start from here. Great. Thank you, Manuel. So as you could see, it's as easy as that. The Seagate array is plugged into Seagate's Redmond receiver. So that's also part of the partnership that an I and Seagate have been enabling together. So with that, the data can start to be uploaded. But there's also a piece of software that enables that. So switching over to the screen over here, we can see the live client. In this, we're currently seeing that the device is being detected as it's booting up. And what we now need to make sure is that we have a workflow enabled that will allow us to run our copy. Switching over here to the workflow pattern, and here we have our workflow configured. Moving over to activities, just selecting that one and clicking on run workflow. So once the system is up and running, we're good to go and it will start its copy process. And with that, we have our data in our infrastructure and we can use it as part of our validation strategy to then train and fine tune our algorithms so that we can release safe and secure products to the market. To summarize, what have we seen today? We started off by setting up our vehicle, went out on the road for a test ride, came back into the office and used the system over here to ingest our data into our infrastructure. And by the way, on the way back home, Tanya called me and she told me that she was monitoring us through the fleet management software that we have as well. And with that, I would like to thank you and see you next time.